We're hiking in Maui. It's one of those crossover collab videos with the photographer. Hey everyone. He's a wizard. We're in Maui because that's where Canon held the launch event for the new EOS R camera. They brought out us and many other members of the press so they could train us in the new camera and solve problems that appeared. But there's one major problem they couldn't fix and it ruined this video. You'll see that in a minute. We're testing the EOS R to see if it's gonna be our next vlogging camera, maybe even the best vlogging camera. It has a flip forward screen, like the number one requirement that you need. It has a hot shoe for a mic and a microphone jack. It also has a headphone jack so I can play back video and listen to it and make sure that I got it. Uh, but most importantly, it's got the Canon dual pixel autofocus that's something like the Panasonic cameras don't have. It'll just lock on my face and keep it on it. Even if I zoom, even if I move around, uh, and if I put something in the foreground, it'll pretty much focus on it right away and then get right back to my face. They say the focusing is better than the 60 Mark II, and so far it seems to be. It's also a little bit lighter, but it has that same big battery from the 60 Mark II. Let me know one. For the focusing test, I decided just to film him without saying anything to see how long it would take him to break. Is it when? No. When is never coming, Chris. He's focusing. Focusing with the new Canon 24 105 f4 was excellent. I simply never thought about focusing. Can that focus that close? If I zoomed, focus locked in a split second later with no oh. input for me. Has he recorded yet? Okay, 30 seconds. This is the moment Chris breaks. It's not pretty. Video autofocusing is the number one reason why you'd choose this camera over any other camera. It's the best we've ever tested. If you don't want to be bothered with manual focusing or you film yourself vlog style, <laughs> this is the best focusing you can get. Is it still focusing? Oh. Grab my body and did not know Tony put the 15 millimeter on it. So now I'm stuck with a lens at a bad focal length for this. Thanks, Tony. Chelsea, Chelsea brought the wrong camera gear, but it's my fault. <laughs> Fresh avocado. By the way, not all good. There are some real drawbacks. There is no sensor stabilization. That's something that we had on our Panasonic. Um, oh, hey, you're Tony Northrup. Dude, I love your show. Can I just say hi? Yeah. Like, I've never been here before, so can you give me some photo tips? Like, how do I get the photo here? Come on, help me do oh, it. Oh, I don't know. I don't I always have to go back and get my camera for those shots, I'm stupid. I would normally use a Joby tripod to carry these things and that, that helps stabilize it a little bit, but I've needed to clip this to my shoulder because we did some climbing, so I couldn't use it. But this has two types of digital stabilization built in um, and what they do is they crop the sensor a little bit and that helps remove some of the shake. Really no better than using warp stabilizer in post, but you know, we're traveling and I just have a laptop with me and warp stabilizer is real time consuming and slow. So it's nice that it happens in camera. So really, really wish it had sensor stabilization built into it. Maybe next generation. If you're using a camera to film your life, you need the battery to keep going so it doesn't drop out on you and the battery's been good. Uh, I did have to change the battery once, it definitely burns through a lot of battery when you're recording video. Also the on off switch is kind of hard to hit, you have to use another hand and I wish it were closer to the shutter button because I like to always turn the camera on and off. You also really need the camera to be durable enough that if it suddenly rains or something it's going to be okay. It's better than probably a Sony camera would be. This is not how this video was supposed to end, but I had a problem with the camera, a real big problem and it's not fixable by any firmware update. It's this, it's a single SD card slot. One card slot. And no matter how many people tell me that they've never had an SD card fail, it doesn't change the fact that memory fails. And during this trip, I had three video clips, three vital video clips get corrupted on me. If I had been writing to two cards, which I always do with a Panasonic GH5 or any of my Sonys, then I would have been able to recover from the other card. When you're at a press event like this, the company makes sure that they have experts with you at all times so they can quickly solve problems that you have. And I immediately showed my guy the problem that I was having. 
He confirmed that the camera was full production. He said I wasn't doing anything wrong. The card should have been compatible. It was formatted in camera. It was UHS-2. It's a Lexar Pro card, but it failed and I cannot go reshoot. And that sucks, but you know what sucks more is losing the video of your kid's first steps or some key part of a wedding video. And pro photographers sometimes do take chances with one SD card slot, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't use this or the Nikon Z cameras or the Sony a7R2 or pretty much any camera with one card slot for anything serious under normal circumstances. Look, if you're spending 2300 bucks on a body or 3400 bucks for the body with the kit lens, you're probably pretty serious about your photography and you should be writing stuff to two cards and it's too bad Canon didn't give you that option because every time you shoot something, you're taking a big gamble. While I'm being a huge bummer, let me tell you about another serious weakness with the camera and that's its 4K capabilities. Canon advertises as a 4K camera, but it, you shouldn't consider it a 4K camera. It's basically an HD 1080p 60 camera, and that can be okay. Lots of people don't want to shoot 4K, and if so, this camera is perfect for you. But we've been a 4K channel since 2014 when the GH4 came out. When the GH5 came out a couple of years ago, we switched to 4K 60. And while technically this camera can produce files that are 4K 30, it does so with a 1.8 times crop. That means that effectively the sensor is smaller than an APS-C camera like Canon's entry-level cameras. It's closer to the size of a micro four-thirds camera. That's a really small camera. That means you're not getting that full frame depth of field. That means you're not getting that full frame low light capabilities. It means you're carrying around a whole bunch of big full frame lens that you're not using. If you're a hybrid shooter and you're shooting stills, it means that when you switch to shooting video, you have to completely recompose your shot or probably change lenses. Okay, so how bad is this crop? This is not good. In fact, it's unacceptable. We've been filming with the Sony cameras, the Nikon D850, and they have very little, if any, crop at all and their full frame. Why would you throw away all your full frame advantages to do this? Some people say that Canon is trying to protect their, protect their higher end cinema cameras. I personally think Canon just doesn't have the tech to pull off video from a 30 megapixel sensor and scale it down so they're doing a one-to-one -one read from the middle. Canon marketing would tell you that this is an advantage. Like if you're shooting wildlife, it'll crop in tighter. And yeah, that's the one scenario where I can see it being an advantage. And we did test it with a 600 millimeter lens for wildlife. And you know what? I do think it's probably the best camera for wildlife video because of the combination of big Canon lenses and smooth focusing. But for most real world use, including the use of vloggers and YouTubers, it's gonna be more of a pain than it's worth. There's one thing that might save you and that's that you can put on APS-C lenses with the adapter and that will reduce the effect of crop. So let's switch this lens now. This is the famous Sigma 18 to 35 F1.8. So this puts me at the equivalent of like 33 millimeters and F3.6 if it were full frame, which is not especially noteworthy. I don't have particularly great background blur like I did before. It's just okay, but I think this is the best you can do if you wanna shoot 4K. And for what it's worth, the autofocus on it still seems to be pretty good, pretty natural and smooth. So if you gotta shoot yourself and you gotta shoot in 4K, check out the Sigma 18 to 35 with the adapter on the Canon EOS R. If you wanna shoot four times slow motion, you have to drop to 720p. You have to give up autofocus and you have to use an incredibly oversized video format. Even then, it looks kinda of mushy. Let's end on a positive note. Here's a really nice touch that lets me know that Canon was thinking about vloggers. The record button is no longer on the back of the camera, but instead it's right there on the top where you can operate it from the front of the camera. Thank you, Canon. If you want to win the Canon EOS R or the Fujifilm X-T3, head to freesdp.com. And no, Canon isn't paying for that camera. We're paying for it ourselves because we don't accept free money or gear from camera or lens manufacturers. That's our promise to help keep us unbiased so we can give you these sorts of honest and sometimes brutally honest reviews. Subscribe to see our full review of the Canon EOS R because plenty more is coming, as well as our tutorial for people who already have it. And if you want, to, uh, want us to answer questions that you might have, write a comment down below. Thanks. Silver Fox, Silver Fox, does everything a Silver Fox would. Oh yeah! Here comes Silver Fox. This is the Tony Northrop theme song. <laughs>